There are areas of the sea floor that look like a great battle has taken place. These are the scattered remains of thousands of seashells. These areas are known as middens. This collection of empty shells has built up over hundreds of years. One of the contributors to this is the Lewis moon snail. This predatory marine snail is the largest of its kind in the Pacific Northwest, reaching up to five and a half inches across. Ranging from southern Alaska to southern California, it inhabits silty seafloors from the intertidal zone to depths of 500 feet. Incredibly, the moon snail's foot can expand up to four times the volume of its shell, nearly covering the entire shell itself. This impressive foot allows the moon snail to glide effortlessly across the bottom and to burrow under the silt to hunt for prey. The snail expands its foot by pumping water into it, but when threatened, it can rapidly expel the water and shrink the foot small enough to fit entirely back into the shell. The curled up structure on the side of the moon snail is the siphon. Through this, the snail breathes, pulling water into the body and over the gills. While the moon snail has no eyes, it does have two cephalic tentacles sticking up on the front of the head. There is little known about the function of these tentacles, but it is likely they have chemotactic abilities, meaning the ability to sense the chemical signature of both their prey and other moon snails in the area. But this is most likely from a very short distance. For the most part, a moon snail cruises the surface of the seafloor and under it, hoping to blunder into its next meal. Most hunting activity is hidden from view as its preferred prey, such as gaper clams, butter clams, and little neck clams, spend their lives buried under the sand. The heart cockle is a different story. It is often found on the surface of the sand. Although not the preferred prey of a moon snail, due to having a much thicker shell than the other clams, a hungry moon snail won't pass up an easy meal. This allows for a front row seat to the moon snail's impressive hunting behavior. This moon snail seems to be hot on the trail of a cockle. Even without eyes, the snail seems to know it's there. The foot narrows and elongates, heading straight for the cockle. This looks like it's going to be an easy meal for the moon snail. After all, how fast can a cockle move? In this case, pretty fast. Sensing extreme danger, the cockle uses its powerful muscular foot to pull vault away from this predator leaving the moon snail unaware its meal has already escaped. Not all encounters end in the cockle's favor. This moon snail has managed to get a firm, suction-like grip on the cockle. Unaware that it's under attack, the cockle is too slow to react. Once the cockle realizes the danger, it tries to pry itself loose from the powerful grip of the moon snail's foot. But the moon snail continues to envelop the cockle by curling both the front and back of its foot toward each other, eventually completely enveloping the cockle. Jokingly, we divers call this the meatball but it's no joke for the hapless cockle, which is about to become dinner. Have you ever seen a shell with a perfectly countersunk hole lying on the beach and wondering how it got that way? This is the next step after the moon snail has enveloped its prey. It uses a multi-toothed tongue called a radula to drill into the shell 
forming these very distinctive holes. Once the shell is penetrated, the moon snail secretes an enzyme into the clam that breaks the tissue down so it can use its proboscis to feed through the hole. Perhaps you've heard the term, someone's trash is someone else's treasure. Well, these aren't trash. You may have seen them on the beach at low tide or while diving. They look like an old discarded rubber plumbing gasket. Don't pick them up and throw them away. These are moon snail egg collars and they are loaded with thousands of eggs. Moon snails have separate sexes. The male and female link up and sperm is transferred into the female where the eggs are fertilized. The female burrows under the sand and secretes a jelly-like mucus layer around her shell and foot. Small granules of sand adhere to this sticky substance, creating the first layer of the egg collar. Then the female lays eggs around this layer, after which she secretes a second jelly mucus layer attracting more sand, encasing the eggs between the two layers. Once completed, the female pushes herself and the egg collar to the surface of the substrate. The eggs develop within the egg collar for up to six weeks, depending on the temperature of the water. Once the collar starts to break down, the eggs develop into a planktonic larval stage. After four to five weeks of feeding in the plankton, they settle to the bottom and begin their carnivorous behavior. The Lewis moon snail is quite long lived, up to 14 years for the females. They have few predators, among them sunflower sea stars, other moon snails, and giant Pacific octopuses, which discard the shells near their rocky layers. An empty moon snail shell rarely goes to waste. It's usually repurposed by other critters, like this hermit crab, who is happy to turn it into a mobile home. They also make a great place to lay eggs, like this grunt sculpin has, protecting itself and its young from predators. So the next time you're walking the beach at low tide and you discover a shell with a hole drilled into it, a rubbery looking egg collar, or an empty moon snail shell, you can be assured that there are dozens of moon snails just offshore prowling the bottom for their next meal.